Hello, I'm Jamie Vaughn with Singing Muse, and today I'm here with The Sound, and these guys are Rob Levi and Jacob Mills. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, we're well, good. It's good to be on here with you. Good. What are you guys up to when we're having to stay in place in, in most of the country still? Well, well I am oh. up a few pounds. How about that? <laughs> I think I eat all the quarantine snacks, but that's the way it works sometimes, I guess. But yeah. uh, no, we're here in Michigan at home and mm -hmm. uh, hanging out, just trying to make the best uh, out of the situation and to do the most that we can while we're here. So during most of this, have you been in Michigan or were you on the road when all of the shutdown happened? We were actually, we were in Florida when it first happened. Um, we were on the road and we had been staying in Florida and uh, that's where we were kind of stuck for several weeks. And then we finally decided to make the trip home um, and we did, and now we've been home for a few weeks, and uh, it's been uh, been kind of more of the same, you know. Yeah, we were in we were in Florida January through uh, until about three weeks ago. Oh, we had to suffer winter. It's horrible. Yeah. It's suffering for the Lord there. Yeah. We if you're going to be quarantined, you might as well be quarantined in Florida, where it's sunny and nice and not snowing. I agree, and that's what I did. So I. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you guys have been doing some amazing Facebook Lives for your fans. Um, how did that all come about? Um, so it was about two years ago. We, uh, on, on, kind of on a whim, we did a Facebook Live video. And we had been talking a little bit afterwards. And we decided that we were going to make a, a weekly thing out of it. And to my knowledge, at the time, uh, in, in our genre, we were probably the only ones that did it. And what we started doing was we did a weekly Facebook Live show. And every week we're on for about a half an hour or so. And we do some, we do some playing and we do some singing and uh, just kind of let everybody know what we're up to for the week and let them spend a few minutes with us. And we, uh, the music that we sing isn't necessarily always our own music, but just yeah. music that we love. And uh, we've, we've thrown all sorts of things in there, but it's been fun. It's been a great way for us to keep up with people and for people to keep up with us. Yeah. And I think and, we've only missed like one out of the last two years or so that, 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 that we've only missed. And that's because we were on the cruise ship and couldn't get a signal. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we actually tried. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties, but uh, we made up for it. But uh, we did miss our usual time is Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock is when eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time and uh, that's generally when we go live and I think like you said we've only missed that one time in two years. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing most people can't keep that up very long. So this past year has been kind of a whirlwind. You signed with a new record label, you put out a new album called Make It Count that has gone number one, a new single called Can I Get a Witness that's number one, does it feel like it's all happening at once, that it's um, an overnight thing? I know you've been at it for a long time, but it seems to be coming really, really fast. You know, it's been, it's been a big year. I've, I've told people, God, the Lord's always been good to us, but this past year has been something really special to mm -hmm. us. Um, like you say, we signed with the, with the record company, New Day Records, last, uh, last June, almost a year ago. And uh, whenever we did that, uh, we, we started working on an album pretty much immediately. And uh, that was, you know, when, you, when you're making a record, that's kind of where your energy's at. You're, you're, really, you're really focused on, on the project that you're working on. And uh, so for the first several months was just working on that and, uh, and just kind of being lost in the, in the process a little bit. And then once the record came out, um, we only ended up touring because it came out Black Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was in November. And then we toured with it January, or I'm sorry, December, January, and February. And March is when this quarantine thing started, when everything hit. So really, we've only lived with that music after the album release for about three months. And um, it's been kind of interesting because I think, I think all of this kind of happened at, at the time that it needed to happen because I think that the music especially really spoke to people, uh, especially when where we're at through the quarantine, through the situation that yeah. the world's in. Yeah. Um, I think that it was just the right thing that people needed to hear at the right time. So uh, it was just, it's kind of cool how the Lord worked all of that out uh, and, and how it ended up coming together like it did. 
But um, obviously, the Can I Get a Witness is the first single off of the album, and it just went uh, number one. So yeah. uh, that was really cool. Um, it's it's our very first, it's the sound's first number one song. Yeah. So that's it's awesome. We were thrilled over that. It, I mean, just very very humble. Didn't quite <laughs> didn't quite know what to yeah. think about it, you know. But uh, we're just glad. It's exciting that, though. It, it really is. is. We're just glad that people are responding to the to the music the way that they are and that it's touching them where they're at. So, so Rob, you've been around Southern Gospel for a long time. Um, you toured as a teenager and then kind of walked away from that the music career and then brought the sound back. How did you decide to start singing with the boys? Uh, well, I was a minister of music for about 16 years and and Levi and Jacob, I guess you were what, 11 and 12 at the time? Maybe, they were maybe playing, a little bit younger. They were playing drums and bass for me in my worship team. Wow. And I knew that God had, had gifted them because, you know, you just didn't realize, if you didn't look around and see that you were playing with little kids, um, you know, you didn't, you didn't feel that way. You know, they weren't holding you back. And so um, my wife and I just began to pray about it. And we said, you know, I think the Lord's really doing something with these boys. And we prayed about it and we just launched out and, and uh, I resigned from the church and we began to go out and sing on a part-time basis. Um, and so as the Rob Mills family, and when we, when we did that, you know, we did that part-time for a few years. And then uh, in, toward the end of 2016, we began to pray about it again because the boys were now graduating high school and college. And, you know, we, we just sat down and we said, you know, what do you feel like the Lord is, is doing with you? What do you feel like he's asking you to do? And so prayed about it and they felt like this um, was, was what they, the, the Lord was calling them to. And so, um, you know, we began to pray about uh, a name that we could go under and the sound that I had been a part of in the early nineties, like you say, as a young man, like these boys, uh, was available because the sound had retired. And so we took that name and began to travel under the name, the sound. And so in 2017, we launched out as the sound. And so it's just, it really is, it has been an adventure so far. The voice, have you always wanted to sing and did you always have that musical talent? So when I was really little, I'm, I'm talking like two years old. Um, I would, I would go down my dad, you had a home studio yeah. in the basement at the time. And uh, I would go down and, and just sing into the microphone. He put you know? the headphones on. They were bigger than his head. You know, they were huge. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, we had recordings of me when I was just really, 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 really little um, singing and, and uh, with you even. There was yeah. a couple of songs that we did together. Um, so I always, growing up, was interested in music. I loved it. I wanted to sing. You know, I, I was a drummer, so I, and I don't really do that much anymore. But... Um, I, I did. Uh, I did do that a lot growing up. And then Jake, Jake I mean, how old were you? Ten. Ten. I, think I was ten years old whenever I started getting into music. Mm -hmm. uh, but I really didn't have anything to do with it before then. No, no but when I just watched you guys up on right. stage at church and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. but the, the he got bit by the bug. I'm telling you right now, it hit it hit like a truck because he was <laughs> he was all of a sudden playing bass and he was doing. I mean, oh. it was it was. He learned very, very, very quickly. He's a little like me. He he grabs a hold of it and he'll play it. You know, that's that's what he does. So it's been it, it really is it's something how God gives everybody something different to do. You know, if he would have gifted both of these boys exactly the same, you know, there wouldn't be that the variety that you need to make it all work. And so I've always been amazed at you know, at other groups, family groups uh, that, that, you know, I think of like the Isaacs or and things like that where, you know, they all sing a different part and they all play something different. It's really, really is something how God meshes all that together. You have amazing, amazing family harmonies. And this album really brings those together. And it's not just Southern Gospel on the album. It's a little bit of everything. And I think that it's a, a non-traditional Southern Gospel album in the fact that I think that you're going to reach people that have never even heard Southern Gospel, but who are going to love this album, make it count. What was the inspiration in pulling the music together for it? Oh, man. I think it's just the influences like 
like that I grew up around because uh, I didn't necessarily grow up in church. My dad was a my dad was an entertainer, and so I grew up playing music with my dad. And so my dad was bluegrass. He was country. You know, I played. Uh, with some other people that played, you know, Southern rock and, you know, all these different kind of genres. And, and I just had all of this stuff that always was flooding in our house. And so, you know, when the boys were little, you guys were uh, around that, you know, some of the same likes that I had, obviously, as a parent, you're playing your own thing, but your kids grow up in it. Yeah. So I, what I tell people is, you know, we grew up listening to Southern gospel and we love Southern gospel music. And that, you yeah. know, that's, that's the world that we're in. And when we, um, but, but growing up, that's not necessarily exclusively everything that we listened to. You know, we, we had all of these influences coming from all these different places. So when we went to go make uh, the album, when we went to go record, make it count, we knew that there was, uh, there was some there was stylistically, that we wanted to, I don't want to necessarily say make a statement, but, you know, really, really express all of these different influences that we have and everything coming together like it did. So, I mean, there's some, there's some, uh, definitely some country music on there, that not necessarily, uh, it's country influenced, I should say, from, uh, so it's, it's got some, it's got some cool things on there that we really, really like and that uh, it, it, it was a great fit for us. But growing up in the South and in, in Western North Carolina, I grew up, you know, on the weekends, I would hear coming through our house, you would have the inspirations coming through, the Kingsman, all of those things. And so all of that just uh, still added to it. And I had a love for Southern Gospel, uh, you know, started traveling in Southern Gospel in my late teens, early 20s. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that was a big influence as well. And so when we made this, we, and we just began to think, you know, there's probably a lot of people that are kind of like me that... Have, know this music maybe but didn't necessarily grow up uh, you know that way so and you know what the interesting thing is that i found out is just how much gospel music has influenced other genres of music as well because some of i mean some of my favorite singers growing up uh are, were, were gospel singers I, I mean a lot of a lot of the people that i listened to growing up that i that i modeled my singing after were gospel singers and then even the people outside of gospel music that I, that I listened to were influenced by gospel singers. You know, it's, they, it's, it's music that they grew up listening to and that influenced them and impacted them. So it's really cool just how much gospel music has impacted yeah. the entirety of the music industry. It really is. I think that people would be shocked to know who grew up singing in church and that was Yeah, there. for sure. Oh, yeah. I think your your Aretha Franklins and your and your Whitney Houston's and all of those people, yeah. Yeah. So, boys, you're the next generation of Southern Gospel, and so you're bringing in your age group. What are you trying to do to reach a group that maybe had not heard Southern Gospel before? Well, uh, I mean, obviously, we're we're putting all of this out there on social media and all of that. Social media is a really a really big thing, um, and it's something yeah. that it's kind of where everything's headed. Um, and the, the way that we're trying to, to really, I don't, I don't want to say bring awareness to, uh, to gospel music, but I mean, I, I guess it kind of is. Um, the way that we're doing that is it's going to be through social media because I mean, every week uh, there's thousands of people that are watching these videos and all that kind of thing. And it's people that, that I mean, we're not, we don't sing to in person necessarily all the time. I'm hoping that we sing to all of them in person at some point, but uh, it's, it's a great way for us to, to reach out and to bring people into what we're doing and have them, uh, have them really personally invested into what, uh, what this music is. And it's really cool to be able to, to reach out and to, for people to experience this kind of in the middle of their week, you know, as they're going on, I find so many people that look forward to, to listening to this music um, every week. Yeah. So uh, we, it, it's really cool to be able to reach out that way and do that. I mean, other than that, I mean, we're just, we're just being ourselves and trying to, trying to show Jesus, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's just kind of the type of thing where the music that we're singing is, it's very much us and it's very much uh, something that we love. And I think, that that's going to come across at some point. I think people are going to fall in love with it just from the mere standpoint that we're so in love with the music, you know? So it's, uh, it's just pretty cool. I think it's gonna, I think that's what's going to draw people along.
So any chance that your sister Emily will join the group? No, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I tell everybody all the time, God gives everybody a different talent. We were talking about that earlier. And she has never really, she can sing, but she's just really never had that desire to do it. And so she is in college right now. She's doing sign language interpreting. So, and, and, and so I'm always just, every time I see her do the sign language stuff, I'm just enthralled with it. You know, I'm like, I'm mesmerized. And so we're, we're so excited for Emily and what she's doing. Uh, but I don't think, I don't think she has a desire to, to sing at all and, and to do the traveling that we do. Well, you know. It, you never know, though. Yeah. <laughs> so as songwriters, what's the favorite lyric that you've ever written? Yeah, I'm just going oh, down I haven't written one, so I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that you've ever written. Um, uh, you know, I would probably, I would probably say, um, well, that's a great question. Uh, my mind, my mind thinks about uh, a couple of things. Uh, you know, the reminder of that he is able uh, is a song that I wrote some years back and we released a few years ago. Um, but just reminding folks that the Lord is able to, to meet our needs, to take us through. Um, it doesn't matter what comes our way. He is more than able uh, to take us through it. And so it's a reminder of that. Uh, you know, I even think about, I even think about the song that I wrote called No Stones to Throw and, you know, yeah. of, of being, um, you know, sometimes just being a listening ear. You don't have to really say anything. And, um, and besides that, with, uh, with all the things that, that's gone on in my life, I wouldn't have any stones to throw at anybody anyway. So, um, so I'll just, you know, those are just a couple that, that come to mind. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm really, yeah, you written, you wrote the title cut off the project. Right, make make it count. Count. And there was another one called it was grace that was on that project. It was as grace. Well. Yeah. Um, now I haven't particularly written a lot, uh, but I've written some, my personal, my personal favorite lyric that I've written is probably a song called rain. It's off of our, uh, it's off the make account record. It's one that Jake and I actually ended up writing together. Um, I didn't write. What's that? Favorite song on the album. Really? <laughs> Thank you. That was cool. Well, I'm glad you like it. That's uh, it's, it's one of, <laughs> it's one of ours too. <laughs> but um, it's, it, that was an interesting one. Um, I love the I love the lyrics of that particular tune. Uh, it was fun to write. It, it's it's kind of a fun song, but it's an encouraging song as well. Um, and I, I just I don't know. I love playing around with the lyrics of that and really trying to tell a story there. You know, uh, and I tell people all the time that one's a little funny because there's not really a lyrical hook in the whole song. It's it's more melodic hooks than anything else. But uh, but there's not really a lyrical hook in it. It's mostly descriptive. Um, but Jake, that was one that you and I ended up writing together. Yeah. Um, I, it was an instrumental at first that I wrote the music for, and then Levi uh, wrote the words to it. Like maybe a month later. Yeah, it wasn't. About it was. It was. I think it, so. Right now it's Memorial Day. It, it's uh, sure. well. It, we we just had Memorial Day weekend. Um, that's not been that's not been too terribly long. Um, last year. Memorial Day weekend was when uh, was when I ended up writing that song, what finishing it. Yeah, uh, so it's been it's been a year ago. Uh, Flip side of the question: What song do you wish you had have written? Hmm. Mm. That's a great question. And there's a lot of great songs out ain't there. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It is it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It's it's a great great great. You know. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, in gospel music, I, I don't know, I love, I love listening to just about anything that Bill and Gloria Gaither have written. I mean, just the, it, oh, they're the very well, they they're very well known songwriters for a reason. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very, very powerful, the things that they write, and I, I love listening to just about anything that, that, that they write. Well, Gloria is. I think Bill just tagged <laughs> along. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. But, uh. No, I mean, that's that's something that that we love in uh, in in gospel music. It's they're just some of the top notch. I mean, in general, I, I, even outside of gospel music, they're top notch songwriters. You yeah. Know? So uh, yeah. we love listening to love listening to them. Well, there, there's a reason why they're ASCAP songwriters of the century for all genres. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. Right. Guys, as we wrap up this interview, I want to give you a chance to leave our viewers with a message of hope. What would you like to tell them? 
Um, you know, I, I like to <laughs> I like to tell people about our about our song "Can I Get a Witness," and the reason I like to tell people about it is because I love the story of, of why it was written. So we were talking about uh, the, the well, not us. Uh, the writers of that one were Ken West, Jason Cox, and Brent Baxter, and we were just talking to them about uh, how that song was written, and they were talking about, you know, it, to be an encouragement, what they kind of wanted to do was they wanted to look back and recall how the Lord has brought us through before and mm, yeah. just let everybody know that because we can look back and see how he's brought us through before, we can trust that he's going to do it again because we know that he's able to do it again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know that we're going through a lot in the world right now, but uh, I, they, said that, they said that the scripture verse that inspired the song was Lamentations 3.21, and that was, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. That's right. And it's, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible thing when we can look back and, like I say, see how the Lord's brought us through before and trust that he's going to do it again. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're doing, and uh, that's why we love singing that song, especially right now. And looking back gives us the confidence to be able to look ahead. Right. That's okay. right. So. Gentlemen, thank you so much for talking to us. And I know there's some really big things ahead this year coming up that I cannot wait to tell people about. <laughs> I can't wait to see where God leads you next. Oh, we are so, so excited. Much. Thank you for inviting us on. We, we really appreciate it. And huge hello to everybody over at Singing News, yeah. by the way. <laughs> we love you guys. That's awesome.